All right, good afternoon, everybody. We'll get started here in a couple seconds. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us at Salt River Field to Talking Stick to help us introduce the newest Colorado Rocky, Chris Bryant. We'll go ahead and do a few introductions uh, down the line here, and then we'll get started. A couple of them will say a few words, and then we'll open it up to questions. Uh, on the right here, Rocky's Vice President and General Manager, Bill Schmidt. Next to him, Rocky's Manager, Bud Black. To Buddy's left, 2016 National League Most Valuable Player and newest Rocky, Chris Bryant and to his left, his agent, Scott Boris. I'd also like to welcome to the stage now, Rocky's owner, chairman, and CEO, Dick Monfort, to say a few words and present Chris. Welcome, everybody. Glad you're all here. And uh, nice to see Chris's family here and his son, who has a lot of energy. We hope you have that much energy. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is, this is a great day for us. Uh, I talked to Chris the other night, and uh, just so many things make this feel really, really right. And uh, so we're, we're extremely excited to have Chris with us for the next seven years and to, uh, to help us win uh, that elusive World Series that we uh, all are looking for. So with that said, congratulations, Chris. Welcome to the Colorado Rockies. And here is a... Yeah. Usually they come buttoned already for us. We'll have to talk to them about that. You guys know how hard these buttons are, huh? <laughs> <laughs> come on. We'll leave that one open. Okay. Congratulations thank and thank you, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I'll say a few words for sure. Uh, thank you, Dick and. The Monfort family and Bill and Kyler, I guess, screaming over there, and Bud and Scott and Boris Corp. Um, super excited to be here. Uh, worked my whole career to get to this point, to be able to choose where you want to play. And um, Colorado is, is, is definitely fits my personality. I, I love the spot. It's always been a big, uh, big favorite of mine and my family. And I'm looking forward to raising a family there and winning a lot of games for the Rockies. And uh, one thing I've always known about this team is I always hated playing them. Um, the pitching staff it always has arms. Uh, a lot of young players coming up, a lot of them over here. And I really appreciate you guys show, show, showing up here for me. And uh, just looking forward to get started. So, and looking forward to answering your guys' questions too. So let's do it. Very happy to have Chris. I've been chasing him around for the last 13 years, if it was Bonanza High School to uh, Ohio Warhawks, University of San Diego, Chad Mays. So I've always thought a lot about Chris and his ability. So glad to have you pulling on the rope with us. Thank you. I think uh, Chris said it uh, perfectly. He chose us, which is a great thing. You know, he wanted to be a Rocky. I'm sure he had multiple, multiple offers. Uh, if I know Scott like I know, probably true. But I really like the fact that he wanted to be here. And I'm looking forward to, to working with him. I know our guys are. Uh, I've seen him from the other side. He's a ball player. He's a player. And we need guys like this. So great to have you, man. Thank you. Great thank you. Time. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Chris. Hey, you yep. Again. Thomas Harding, MLB.com. Um, Chris, what were some of the factors that led you to the Rockies? Well, like I mentioned earlier, 
getting to this point in your career where you get to choose where you want to go is, is a huge blessing and something that um, I don't take lightly. Worked hard to get this point. And, um, you know, like I said at the you know beginning here with the team, I, I just feel like, you know, they're so often overlooked in terms of the players they have here, the pitching staff, the velocities that they're running out in the bullpen. Um, I don't think I've ever had a comfortable at bat facing the Colorado Rockies. So, um, and you know, I've, I, I've come from teams in Chicago where, you know, um, bringing a World Series there and, and knowing what it takes. And, uh, you know, we brought veterans in, you know, at that time. And I want to be that veteran presence for the guys here. And hopefully I can, uh, you know, they can lean on me for advice and, and big games. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to a full seven years here for sure. Yeah, Chris, uh, Nick Grove from The Athletic. Uh, it's kind of strange to say, but you've, this is now your third team in a year, uh, which is yeah. weird. Uh, looking back, um, what, what, what has it been like, this journey for you in the last year? Um, you, know, you leave your original team, Trey, you're in a, in a World Series chase, mm -hmm. essentially, and now you're on a, another new team. What, what has it been like the last year for you? Yeah, definitely a lot of emotions the last, uh, the last year. Um, obviously, leaving a, a, a team that drafted me and gave me an opportunity to play in the big leagues and win there and then getting traded. Obviously, that was very emotional and going to a, a team that was doing great uh, last year and then going through this whole offseason, the craziness that that brought and then uh, finally getting a chance to choose where I want to play. Um, you know, it's it's really hard to put into words um, the stresses, the the happiness, all the all the emotions that I felt over the past year. But, um, you know, it, it's all been worth it for for me and my family. And uh, I couldn't be more more grateful for for this opportunity. Danielle Allen talk with the Gazette. Um, what was the uncertainty of the lockout like for you? And in the back of your mind, did you have a couple of teams that you were thinking about during that time? Or did you just try to focus on, you know, getting ready? Um, yeah, I feel like it, I felt like at the beginning with the lockout and the uncertainty there, it was a little tough, but um, I felt like over, you know, however long it was, 99 days, uh, it was nice to kind of check out and just focus on on my training and my family and, and really focusing on that and becoming a better dad and, and husband and and um, not necessarily stressing about, you know, where I'm going to play or any of that. But it all came in like a, a week. So all those stresses came back real quick. But um, it was nice for me. It was nice to kind of check out, get away from f for a little bit and um, come back hungrier than ever, you know, with a new team. Patrick Lyons, the DNVR.com. You've been to the postseason six of the last seven years of your career. When you look up and down the roster, do you see this club being one that can contend for as frequently as you've previously been in? Experience? Of course, of course. And, you know, I, I see this as me being here for seven years and a lot of uh, growth and opportunity there to, to, to help a team, you know, get there and, and win a World Series. And um, I take a lot of pride in the fact that I've never played on a losing team. Um, in the big leagues, and I don't plan on doing that. So um, I hope I can bring a, an attitude um, here that they already do have. I just hope to, to complement it and and kind of be a winning presence in the locker room, and um, you know, just lead by example, and hopefully answer any questions the guys have um, about you know playing in big games, playing in a big city, and pressure packed situations. Um, I feel like I've I've had a lot of those experiences in my career, and uh, I really want to be the guy that to help the to get the guys here. Yeah, Chris, you mentioned um, <laughs> your your history facing the Rockies, but w uh, what are your impressions of Coors Field overall, um, especially hitting there, but also defensively? Yeah, Coors Field. Um, you know, I love hitting there. <laughs> Who doesn't? I mean, it's it's definitely a, you know a hitter's park, um, and that's definitely attractive as a, as a hitter. Um, but just the park in general, and, and you know, going there for the All Star Game last year, and getting to see the home side in the clubhouse, and how much money they've invested in, into that and this facility, I, I was I was completely shocked and blown away at 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 just the stuff you had at your fingertips there, and and um, you know, and I was talking with so many guys on other teams too. They're like, "This is the best clubhouse we've ever seen." And um, a lot of that goes into it, but you know, you have good people like Bill and, and Dick and Buddy and the players here, and you know, this is a guy who I want to play for. I respect this guy a lot, and um, you know, our Zoom call was uh, really awesome. Um, and you know, it's just a baseball guy, and I I, lo I love 
getting to play for different coaches along the way. And this guy right here, I'm really excited for, for our relationship here. Thomas Harding, again, if you can um, uh, bear out a couple of questions. First one, are you a big challenge guy? I mean, the Cubs, how long it took for them to win a World Series. How does the challenge of making the Rockies a consistent winner compare with that? Hey, I'm always up for a challenge in, in anything. You can ask my family and, and, and wife over there and, and just, you know, I, growing up, I wanted to get straight A's because uh, my grandparents gave me 100 bucks every straight A report card. Uh, they wanted to hit home runs, they gave me $20 every home run. So I was up for a challenge always. I've always had that desire and passion in me to, uh, to succeed. And um, it might not always show. I'm not the type of guy that's going to, you know, scream or do anything out there. But deep down, um, you know, I might be the hardest guy on themselves. Um, I'm sure if you ask my wife, she would tell you the same way. There's been lots of uh, nights where it's, you know, I just, I just want to do so good on the baseball field and I want to help the team out and I want to win. And, um, you know, that's just what I'm about. And, and it is attractive when, you know, um, like in Chicago, uh, bringing a championship there and c they lost for a long time and now it's a winning culture and I really hope to, to bring that here too. And Bud Black and Chris, did you guys know each other? from years maybe in San Diego, off seasons, or growing up or anything? Or? First off, I'm gonna up the ante on the, on the from $20 to maybe a little higher on the homer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> Typical agent, I love it. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, I, I, you know, Chris might not know it, but I saw him play in January uh, when he was at USD. Uh, when I was, you know, off season in San Diego, I saw, I went, saw a scrimmage, I saw him play. Uh, prior to that, we didn't really know each other, you know, just from the other side, cross and pass. Uh, we spoke a little bit this year at the All-Star game, but, you know, from the other side, right? I, I've, you know, I watch players. I'm, you know, I'm a fan and I was always a big fan. So when we went, you know, through this process, you know, obviously we all do our homework. Billy's known him since he was a young kid, but uh, I asked around to a lot of guys, uh, managers, coaches that Chris has had, te teammates and uh you know, everything I got was awesome. And I can just tell, you know, instinctively from what I saw as a young player when he first got to the big leagues that uh, he's the type of guy I'd love to have on our team. Question for Bill. You've been chasing Chris for a while now. Um, what was it about him way back then that you saw in him, and how did it feel to finally get him? Um, you know, I think the first thing with Chris was his ability to play both halves of the ball, right? Uh, even as a young kid, he played – the corners. I think at USD, you finally started playing some outfield, and you know, when you saw that, you went kind of okay. The athletic versatility, and then just the natural ability to hit. He's always had that. So, um, as we talked about in the winter, you know, we were looking at a bat and really one that can help lengthen out our lineup. And it's going to fit in the middle of it, and he checked a lot of boxes. Um, I'm going to uh, press you to expand on that a little bit. Uh, I asked Buddy the same question the other day, but. Um, you know, beyond adding a prolific bat and uh, a, a good player, are are you wanting sort of like downstream effects with with the team with Chris in the middle? Um, you know, either in the lineup or or just overall in the clubhouse. What are, I mean, are there are the things that you uh, want out out of Chris? I just want Chris to be a good teammate, and we talked about that the other day. Just be a good teammate first and foremost, and we talked about pulling on the rope. Just be one of the guys. The other stuff will merge over time. But just being a good teammate is the most important thing for me. Patrick Lyons at DNVR.com. Buddy, Bill, obviously on the I'm coaching side, <laughs> you've worked with the two managers that Chris Bryan has had most, that being David Ross and Joe Madden. Anything in the conversations you've had with those guys about what the Rockies are getting um, in the clubhouse as, as a leadership? I know you touched on it, um, but just as a, a civilian, maybe outside of the field and, and if Scott if you want to add to that at all as well uh, about Chris Bryant the person is well <clears throat> you know that was, that was the first thing that you know everybody said uh, you know we have uh, you know in our organization double-a manager Chris Norfia who was a coach with the Cubs when uh, when Chris was there uh, and I, I walked in uh, this morning with with Dino and the first thing Dino said was about the guy about the character of the guy uh, Joe said the same thing you know, Chris mentioned it today about uh, his family. You know, his mom and dad who are here. Jess, who is here with Kyler. I mean, he's, 
you know, family guy, great ball player. I mean, encompasses all that. So, I mean, that, that sort of speaks for itself, itself, what he's said today. And, I'm, you know, Scott has known, uh, you know, Chris a, a long time. So he can share his views on that, too. First of all, I want you to know that Buddy is the king of Zoom. I've never seen anybody over a Zoom call be more impressive, no <laughs> doubt. Um, but the, the, the truth of it is that, you know, KB came to me and he goes, you know, when I was with the Cubs, what made us win? How, what was the diagnostic? Because no one expected him to win. When you go to franchises, when no one expects you to win, how do you win? What, what occurs? And it's the acquisition of, of the veteran, the, the core pitcher, the core position player. And then he had the, the influence of Zobrist on him and his team and what to do and how to do it and saw the power of that, uh, what it means to a team. And so as teammates come to them, with, you know, every, every player has great concerns. They have real, real concerns about being the best they can be in their team, their futures, and it's a daily grind. And having walked the path that Chris has walked, he can answer all the questions, talk about the routes and paths to do things, and really, I think, do what was been done for him and pass that baton. And he's uh, a very, um, he's a different major leaguer in this sense, is that he has an academic coefficient that few have, but he also has something that I think he knows who he is, he knows what he, what he wants to do. And in my job, it is a rare, rare time that you can say that a player gets to where he wants to go and that all things work out where he chooses the city, the place, the environment where he plays, his examination of the organization. And I think what's really enlightening about this deal that all that happened because he chose to be a Rocky and, and for a lot of reasons they're gonna allow him to play great, do well, and also has the confidence that what happened in Chicago is something he's capable of, of, of optimizing here as well. Scott, I wanted, oh, wanted to follow up with you on um, how many teams were involved in this, and you said Chris wanted this all along. But I've also recall you once saying that there are great cities out there, but it takes business acumen to get this done. How? Do, uh, what other teams were involved, and what was it that the Rockies did that? really convinced you and Chris to come there? Well, when I go to a wedding, I don't really talk about the bridesmaids. So the, the, the answer to this always is, is that, that if, That's if right, you, next to, I love that one next to academic coefficient. That's right. That was awesome. And I, I think when you. That was your best one. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, right. But when you work for someone that's articulate and, and really understands the league, but understands the pressures of the league, of championship play, of, of what it's like, you know, the, the ground ball in Cleveland on a wet surface, and you got to get the last out. You, you, know, you know all those things. And every player wants to know from a player what's that, what's that like. And so when you're the ownership here, and, and, and a credit to Bill is that if you want to think about Billy's acumen is that he knows – hitters and he's had great success with them he knows how to find them pick them and he has relentlessly been on kb from the start and i think to have that information go to your ownership and your ownership supporting the the information they're getting it's it's an ideal thing and the the dynamic of being able to go to a place where you know you your swing and what you do is is so oriented to being successful. I think it shows, it shows in the locker room, the confidence levels raised and, and then other players around him get a chance to be at their optimum. Hey Chris, this is David Brandt from the AP, kind of going off Thomas's question. Obviously you, you took a decent chunk of baseball by surprise by <laughs> signing with the Rockies and I just, just were you surprised that they came so strong at the, in, in this negotiation or, no. or just what was, did you approach them, did they approach you? No, I mean this I guess I, I guess I've seen some of the surprise, but this has gone back since you know high school. Like Bill was saying, I I originally thought when I was getting drafted, I was going to the Rockies. I mean, I had I had definitely communication with the Cubs, but I had more so with the Rockies, and I had the general feeling that I was going to be here. So um, you know, this has been a long thing, kind of brewing, and and something you know I, I was telling Bill, I and he scouted me there in uh, 
double angel ballpark there I, in, I don't know where it is somewhere in Denver but I probably went there three or four times and I've always said I love I love Denver I love the city Denver and Salt Lake are two of my favorite cities very comparable I've always saw myself living there and now that you know I have a son and two more boys on the way in a uh, big family and you know just the division you know being so close to home like all of that is all of that is a plus to me and and um, you know, I was just I was thrilled to hear that the Rockies were, were looking to do, uh, you know, a deal with a, with a bat, and you know, I, I feel like I fit really well here. All right, thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone, for being here. All right, Chris, Good. again, congratulations. Look forward to thank seeing you, you at Coors Field. Thank you.